What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be going over my season 6 shred build here in Mobilitics. Now much like in my last build video for Landslide, all of the gameplay footage you're about to see in Torment 4 was done with very casual friendly gear. And the reason why I'm doing it this way for season 6 is because they've actually made the game far harder for the average player, especially those players who are not currently playing on a Spiritborn class. Now I've also included my gear as well as my glyph levels at the end of the gameplay footage, but let's go ahead and see what I was able to do with this budget shred setup. So as you guys can see here, all of my glyphs are below level 60, so there's still a ton of room for improvement with just the glyph leveling alone. Now we did manage to find a good God Slayer crown, but the only thing that really matters is the multiplier. We got a Mad Wolf Slee with a GA attack speed, but I would prefer max life. A pretty bad pair of gloves. Definitely would prefer the GA to armor on the pants. For the boots, a GA to height and senses or movement speed would be preferred. I was happy to get this 2GA staff, but it definitely could be better. We're using a Banished Lord's Talisman, which is definitely the best thing to use if you don't have a GA and Venom amulet. We did get the GA Quick Shift Hunter Zenith. And then we're rolling a ring with the Starlight Aspect. So as you guys can see there, there's still a ton of room for improvement, even with the budget shred setup there that I used for the gameplay footage. And I did want to mention that I did go ahead and incorporate a mythic setup in this planner as well. And this would be the most optimal version of this build. So if you have those items, go ahead and use them. And we will look over that a little bit in this video. And I also want to mention that there is a stone burst variation. However, you don't have to look at this at all. I'm just really trying to test out what utility stone burst can bring to the druid class for season six. But let's go ahead and go over the build. So for our primary skills, we're using Shred as well as Maul to keep up our buffs. Then we have Petrify as our ultimate, Bulwark for our crowd control break. Then we have Cyclone for a little bit more damage reduction from non-physical sources. And then we're using Blood Howl just to keep up some of those brand new buffs we get in our defensive tree, as well as to give us a little bit more attack speed. Moving on to our Spirit Boons, we're going Weirdness on the Deer. We're Spirit Bonnet into the Eagle. We're using Swooping Attacks as well as Avian Wrath. And then for the Wolf, we're going to be using Energize just to help us with resource generation. And then last but not least on the Snake, we're going to be using Masochistic to give us a little bit more survivability. Moving on to the Aspects and Uniques, for the Helmet, we're running God Slayer Crown. On the chest, we have Mad Wolf's Glee. Then for the Gloves, we're using the Aspect of Retaliation here. On the pants, we're using the aspect of the Agile Wolf. Now, I do want to mention that there's still a bug with this aspect. Even though it was paused on the release of the expansion, you still can't dash with the fourth attack. So just be aware of that. Then for our boot slot, we're going Wild Heart Hunger. For our amulet, we're using the Banished Lord's Talisman. Then for our first ring, that's going to be the Hunter Zenith ring. And then for our second ring, we're going to be using the Starlight aspect, which is how we're going to be maintaining our resources with the budget setup. Now onto the Mythic setup for the Helmet, we're going to be using the Air of Perdition. On our chest, it's going to be the Shroud of False Death because of the plus one to all passives. Then we're swapping out our Banished Lord's Talisman for a GA2 and Venom, as well as the Aspect of the Unsatiated here. And then last but not least, it's the always dependable Ring of Starless Skies. Moving on to our gear affixes, I did want to go ahead and mention to you guys that if you are working on a very limited amount of resources, I would highly recommend that you hold off on masterworking your gear past rank 8 until you get that best in slot piece of gear. I know there are a lot of players, even those hardcore grind players that are having a ton of problems with masterworking materials. So definitely don't go all out trying to triple crit anything that isn't going to be a best in slot gear piece. 
So with that being said, let's go ahead and look at these app fixes. So on our God Slayer crown, I would recommend going with the G8 cooldown. For our Mad Wolf's Glee, I recommend a G8 to max life and don't even worry about the werewolf attack speed because you won't really benefit from that because we'll be capping out that attack speed bucket with everything else that's already included in the build. For the gloves, we're going armor, lucky hit chance to make enemies vulnerable, a GA to ranks to shred. And then for our temperance, we're going werewolf critical strike chance as well as petrify duration. Now, another really good GA if you can't find shred would be a GA to the armor affix because it can be a little bit difficult to cap out your armor in the early game with this setup. Then for our pants, we're going to be running a GA to armor as well as fire resistance. We'll power a defensive tempering for total armor and then a utility tempering for petrify duration. Moving on to our Wild Heart Boots, I recommend a GA to movement speed or ranks to height and senses. And again, you don't need the added attack speed from shapeshifting attack speed. Then for our weapon, we're going to be going with a staff. However, you can use a two-hand mace or a pole arm for the added damage if you want those instead. And then for the affixes, we're going a GA to willpower, max life, critical strike damage. And then for our temperings, we're going to be using critical strike chance with werewolf skills. And then the brand new chance for shred to hit twice weapon tempering. And then obviously we're trying to pump that tempering up as much as we can. Then onto our Banished Lord's Talisman, you can go a GA to ranks to core skills or a GA to attack speed is perfectly fine as well. For the Hunter Zenith Ring, go a GA to ranks to quick shift. And then last but not least for our second ring, we're going critical strike chance, a GA to attack speed, willpower, and then more werewolf critical strike chance, as well as some petrify cooldown reduction. Now, all of the recommended master working and gear affixes are in the mythic version as well. So if you do have those items, go ahead and give that setup a look over. Moving on to our rune words. So for the first one, we're going to be using Tam and Zek. And this is just so that way we can keep up our Petrify ultimate more consistently. Now in the mythic version, I did go ahead and swap the invocation rune to a Yom because then you'll just have your Petrify popping off over and over and over again. It's just a little bit harder to get a Yom rune. And then for our second rune word, we're going to be going with a Lith and a Cree or Cry, depending on how you pronounce it. And this is just to give us that spirit board vortex that pulls all the enemies in close together to give us the maximum amount of damage output we can get out of our shred setup. Then for the gym pieces, we're going to be running sapphires on the armor, a topaz on the amulet, an amethyst on the first ring, and an emerald on the second ring. Now, this is only to cap out our resistances, and truthfully, any combination of gear affixes or gems will do perfectly fine as long as you're meeting that 70% threshold to cap out your resistances so you can survive in Torment 4 content. Moving on to our skill tree, and there are some small differences in the mythic setup, but we're just going to go over the budget setup for this video. So for our basic skill, we're going maul into wild maul. Then for our core skill tree, we're going five point shred into primal shred. Then we're going one point heart of the wild into three points wild impulses. Then three points predatory instinct and three points degree gate. On our defensive tree, we're going one point earthen bulwark into preserving earthen bulwark. Then we're grabbing one point cyclone into preserving cyclone armor. Then we're picking up three points backlash, three points ancestral fortitude, and then three points vigilance. Then we're going one point blood howl into preserving blood howl just for a little bit of attack speed. Onto our companion skill tree, we're just picking up three points feral aptitude here. Then for our wrath tree, we're going one point elemental exposure into three points electric shock. Then we're grabbing one point neurotoxin, one point toxic claws, and three points in venom. Then moving on to our ultimate skill tree, we're going five points Petrify into Supreme Petrify. Then we're picking up three points Offensive Posture as well as three points Catastrophe. Then we're going to go three points Quick Shift, three points Height and Senses, and one point Natural Fortitude. And then lastly, for our key passive, it's going to be Beastial Rampage. Now for our Paragon boards, and just like in the last video, I went ahead and included what to prioritize as you level your Paragon boards. So obviously you're going to be unlocking those Glyph bonuses first. Then you're going to be working on capping out your armor and resistances. Then you're going to build out your damage. And then last but not least, you're going to go for everything extra. So for our starter board, we're going to be running Headhunter Glyph. Then moving on to our second board, that's going to be the Inner Beast board, and we're socking in Dominate here and picking up the Inner Beast Legendary node for some more resource cost reduction. Then for our third board, that's going to be the Lust for Carnage board, and we're socketing an outmatch here, as well as picking up the legendary node Lust for Carnage for that big multiplier we get this season. On to our fourth board, that's the Height and Malice board, and we're socketing in the Spirit Glyph here and picking up Height and Malice. And then last but not least, it's going to be the Ancestral Guidance board. We're picking up the legendary node, and we're also socketing in the Fang and Claw Glyph here. 
Moving on to the last part of our build setup, the mercenary. And much like in the last video, you guys can use whatever mercenary you enjoy the most. I personally like Subo because he gives us this nice little crit multiplier. And then for your reinforcement, I like to go with Rahir and Bastion. However, another good one is Varyana as well as Bloodlust to give you a little bit more attack speed. But anyways, guys, that's my shred build here for season six. And if there are any significant changes that do come about with the mid season patch, I will go ahead and make an update video. And do remember that there is a mythic planner. So if you have any questions whatsoever, go ahead and give that planner a look over as well to see if you can find your answers there. And if not, feel free to post them down in the comment section of this video and I will answer them as soon as I see them. Also be sure to check the description of this video for links to all of my in-game builds. And I do plan on adding an in-game pulverize as well as an in-game wolves build to the description of this video. I just have to have the time to actually sit down and set up those planners. But as always, guys, I hope you're having a great day or a great night, depending on wherever you're from. And peace out. I will see you in the next one.